Lord is good. Lord is good. Hallelujah. Amen. Today I will talk about how to be saved and how to have the fruit of salvation and the fruits of salvation. It's very important that we understand that we are saved and have a living relationship with God. It's for us and also for the children. That when you are teachers, you can help the children not just believe in Jesus. But many, because many people just think, I believe in Jesus and I can go to heaven for sure. Now, it's true. If they truly believe in Jesus, then they can go to heaven. But the faith of God will always produce good works, always produce change. So, uh, so we examine ourselves today and say, if I live out the faith of Jesus Christ, do so I show uh, the faith of Jesus in my life? First, I want to talk about how to be saved. The Bible says this is very simple. Two things. First, repent of our sins and trust in Jesus to forgive us. Okay, can you say it? Repent of us, say it together. Repent of our sins and trust in Jesus to forgive our sins. That's very simple because Jesus has already done it for us. He died on the cross for us. It's a great gift to us. It's the greatest gift to us because without that, we all have to face the punish, punishment of our sins. So when we come to God, we need to say, Lord, I have sinned against you. To realize that sins are destructive. Now, some people believe in Jesus and they continue sin. Many people find it hard to overcome uh, sexual immorality or anger or frustration or depression. And they think this is normal, that we can continue in this. But this is destructive. Any kind of sin is destructive. So the first thing you say, Lord, please forgive my sins. Please, uh, I'm sorry for my sins. So in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just and will to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That for sure when we ask Him to forgive us. Now some people say, my sin is too great. Then He will not forgive me. But God's promise is like this. When we confess our sin uh, with all our heart and say, I'm sorry for my sins, then God will for sure forgive you. It's like switching on the light. Would the light say one day, well, I'm th I'll think about whether I'll turn on the light when you switch the light. Would the light think about that and say, today I'm not going to switch on the light for you? No. no, the light will always switch on. God is also like that. For anyone who is sorry for their sin and ask Jesus to forgive them, Jesus will surely forgive. Some people say my sins are very big, but Jesus forgive all sins. And the second thing is, to be saved is trust in Jesus as our Savior. That, you know, as we know, that this is a free gift. In John 1, 12, But as many as received Him, to them He gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in His name. Now, to as many as received Him, to those people who believe in Him. So here it tells us, what does believing mean? Now, some people think believing is just, I believe there is Jesus. I believe there is God. But that's not what the Bible talks about. The Bible talks about <coughs> believing is receiving. That we receive Jesus as our Savior. Receive Him as our Lord. That you say, Lord, come into my heart and to be my King and my Lord. Amen. Then you are saved. If you don't do that, then it's just head knowledge. Head knowledge will not bring salvation. It must be, say, Lord Jesus, I need you. You know, for me, I hold on to Jesus all, all the time. Jesus, Lord, forgive my sins, and Jesus, give me strength. Jesus, I need you all the time because I know all good things come from God. And there are people who go to heaven. And then they, when they face their sins, they realize what Jesus said is very serious. For instance, one African pastor, he died and went to heaven and went to hell. And in hell, the angel said to him, You know, if your book of life is closed today, you will stay here. And he said, why? He said, Jesus already said, when you don't forgive your brothers, the Father, your, your Father in heaven will also not forgive you. It says very clearly, if you don't forgive other people, God will also not forgive you. And before he died, he did not forgive his wife. He, he, uh, his wife slapped him and for a few days he refused to forgive him. But God gave this man a second chance. 
uh, that he was able to come back and share the testimony in Reinhard Bonnke's uh, meeting that he shared about this. And I want to tell you that we are saved by grace through faith. It's a free gift. Hallelujah. When you ask Jesus to forgive you, then you are forgiven. But when we are forgiven, we also know that there are warnings in the Bible that we want to forgive other people. We want to change. And so to be saved is very simple. Repent and trust in Jesus as our Savior. Say it together. Repent and trust in Jesus as our Savior. So it's very simple. It's a free gift. And then now I talk about the fruit of salvation. When we are saved, what fruits do we have? How, what are the res results of our salvation? And there are six things. And, and these six things I can associate into three pairs. The first two are, first is repentance and turn away from sin. So in short, it's repentance. And then second is continue to trust in Jesus. Now these are the way of salvation. But also when you, when the continual fruit is you continue to repent of your sin and, turn, and trust in Jesus. So the first two are repentance and trust, continue trust in Jesus. And then the next two are re relationship with God. So number three is have a close relationship with God. And number four is to love God. And then number five and six are the good works. Number five is obedience, obey God. And number six is bear fruit. So this six is easy to remember, three pairs. Now can you say it with me? The first is continue repentance. Continue and continue trust in Jesus. And then the next two are relationship. Have a close relationship with God. Have a close relationship with God. And then love God. Love God. And then the last three, last uh, two are about obedience. Obey God. Obey God. And bear fruit. Okay, so it's easy to remember. Can you remember it now? The first two related to Salvation is continue what? Repentance and trust in Jesus. And then number three and four are relationship. Number three is what? Relationship with God and then love God. And then last two are good works. Number five, obey God. And number six, bear fruit. Very good, very good. Now I go over this quickly. First, continue repentance. Now in Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 to 21. It talks about the works of the flesh are evident. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, jealousy, wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies. And all this, and drunkenness, and then he said, those who practice this thing will not inherit the kingdom of God. It says in a few places in the Bible, people who practice this do not inherit the kingdom of God. What does it mean? It means when a person says to believe in Jesus and then he commit adultery and continue to commit adultery, or he continue to have anger, continue to cause problem in the church, then his his life doesn't show the change. So we need to repent. Now you say, I have committed these sins, what can I do? Repent and ask God to forgive you. And if we know that sins are destructive, that the Bible says that when we sow to please our flesh, we will reap destruction. So the first thing we realize is that sins are destructive. Say it with me. Sins are destructive. There are people who lose salvation when they continue to sin, it's possible to lose salvation when they continue to sin. So don't think, don't take sins lightly. It's very important to continue to repent of our sin and turn away from sins, not just repent, but say, Lord, help me to hate sin and believe that sins are, will destroy your life. For instance, if you see me, if I commit serious sin, I could lose my ministry. I can lose my salvation. But I don't want to lose that because they are very precious, right? Amen. Is your life precious? Yes. 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 So you don't want to lose your salvation and lose the blessings <coughs> of God. And the second thing is continue trusting God. As First John uh, 1, 9, uh, I, I mean John 1, 12, which I quoted earlier, that when we, those who receive Him are the ones who are saved. 
I believe in Jesus. So you continue to receive Jesus. Lord, forgive my sin. Lord, be my Lord. And, and give me eternal life. So the first two are continue repentance and continue trust in Jesus. And then have a close relationship with God. Now there are people who believe in Jesus, but don't go to church. And don't pray. And then are they saved? Now, I don't know. I cannot say for sure a certain person is saved or not saved. But if that person has zero relationship with God, he cannot be saved. If he has no relationship at all with God, he just believes, but never go to church and never pray, then he's not saved. But sometimes you don't know whether he pray or not, and whether he obey or not. But this is dangerous. Some people, they just go to church twice a year, and pray occasionally when they are in trouble. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know for sure if they are saved. And also, you realize that it's not just prayer that saves us. It's prayer to confess our sins. You know, some people say, say to God, please heal my sickness. This kind of sickness, this kind of prayer doesn't heal, give you eternal life. Just praying for, oh, give me health, give me strength. This doesn't give you eternal life. It has to be repentance of sins. And some people repent. They say, oh, forgive me, and I come, uh, that I commit adultery. And then turn around and commit adultery. That is not real repentance. So we want to have this continual relationship with God. In, and then in John chapter 15, verse six, uh, 5 to 6, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bear, bears much fruit. And then those, anyone does not abide in me. He is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them in the fire and they are burned. So those people who abide in Jesus, have a close relationship with Jesus, Jesus will stay in him and he'll bear much fruit. But if anyone doesn't abide in Jesus, he's like a branch that is withered. A branch that is withered, does it have any good? No, no then people will put it in the fire. So when people don't have a close relationship with God, it's like a branch that is withered. So many people say, my spiritual life is very dry. Very dry, no strength. Now, it doesn't mean that he will not have uh, salvation. But if he comes to a point that he's totally dry, no relationship at all, then he could lose salvation. Now, I want to tell, uh, say very clearly, we're not saved by good works. We're not saved by doing good. We're saved by grace through faith, <coughs> trusting in Jesus. But when you're saved, then you have the relationship with Jesus. Do you pray to Jesus daily? Do you ask Jesus to forgive your sins? Is your faith marginal? Some people's faith is marginal. They hardly pray to Jesus. Then it's dangerous. It's dangerous to be marginal. And then love God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 22, If anyone does not love God, <coughs> the, uh, love the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be accursed. If anyone doesn't love Jesus, let him be accursed. That's 1 Corinthians 6, 16, verse 22. So if people don't love Jesus, Jesus has blessed us so much and then you just take him lightly and you, you don't love him. You know, faith includes love of Jesus. When you believe in Jesus, you will also appreciate Jesus and you love him. So that's part of our faith. When we believe in Jesus, you will appreciate him and you want him, you like him. So and then obedience. In Matthew 7, 21 to 23, Jesus said, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Yes. Now, when they say, Lord, Lord, what does it mean? They are praying to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Lord, Lord, help me. Lord, Lord, give me money. Lord, Lord, give me a wife, a husband. They ask Jesus for things. But then he said, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Wow. Only when we do the will of God. And many will say on that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name and done many wonders in your name? And then Jesus would declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness, that you are in sin and you, even when you do things. Now, there are people who preach the gospel, but they don't believe the gospel themselves. They don't follow the gospel themselves. They don't love Jesus. They don't have a living relationship with Jesus. And they don't love God and they don't love people. That means their faith is dead. So there are many people who say, Lord, Lord, and cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Is it just a few who cannot enter the kingdom of heaven? Who says, Lord, 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 
the, the Bible verse said, many. There are many in the church who are sinning daily and don't repent and they just go to church as a practice and they might not be saved. <coughs> and then the last is bear fruit. When we are saved, we want to bear fruit of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, patience, kindness. And also we want to bear the fruit of service to God. You serve God. Now in a church is the best place you can serve God. And in uh, uh, John 15, verse 12, verse 2, it says that every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. He will take away. And then it will be withered and will be thrown into fire. So when branches don't bear fruit, when Christians don't bear fruit, there is something wrong with the faith. When you have Jesus, you want to tell people about Jesus. And tell the children here about Jesus. And tell them how good God is. And let them follow God. Now, I tell you these six things as the fruit of salvation. But don't think of salvation as something you earn. We don't earn it. It's a free gift. But when you are saved, you always have this fruit. That you always, can you tell me again the six things? The three pairs. First related to salvation are what? First is continual repentance. And then continual trust in Jesus. And then a two relationship. Number three is what? Relationship. relationship with God and then love God. And then the last two, obey. obey God and bear fruit. So, you know, I have heard that in many places, including in this country, I heard that 60% of the people said they're Christian. But their life doesn't show being Christian. And some of them practice witchcraft. Some of them uh, committed adultery and don't repent and many of them don't go to church and then it's the percentage really 60 percent many of this one day will say Lord Lord and they cannot enter the kingdom of heaven so I hope that you all one day I'll see you in heaven Amen. and one day you see you see me and say pastor you, you came to my place you came to my place and you preach and I heard Amen. you preach and I hope one day you see me there and re well, we'll remember each other I remember you, even Amen. though now I might not remember everyone, but in heaven we'll remember. Amen. We'll have good memory in heaven. Amen. And then we'll it'll be very joyful. God Amen. is good. Amen. It's good to be in God every day you can enjoy Him. Every day you enjoy blessings Amen. of God. Let us pray together. Ask God to help us to really follow Him, not just believe, but to follow Him. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you because in you there are so many blessings. Lord, in you there are so many blessings. Our, our, our place where we live, all this a gift of God. We want to thank you, Lord Jesus, for all the wonderful gifts of God. We want to confess our sins. Lord, we all have sinned against you. Please forgive us and give us eternal life. We want to trust in Jesus as our Savior and come to you in repentance. And we want to bear this fruit. First, we want to have a continual repentance. Yes. We don't want to live in sin. And then we want to have a continual trust in Jesus as yes. our Savior. And then we want to have a close relationship by praying to Jesus and reading the Word of God yes. and believing in the Word of God and thinking about the Word of God and have this living relationship. And we want to love Jesus. We want to love God because you have blessed us so much. And then we all want to obey you and follow you. And then also we want to bear fruit to love God and love people and bring people to your kingdom. Lord, when we follow you, we'll have peace and love and joy and our life will blossom and we can bless many, many people. Oh Lord Jesus, help us to appreciate you. It's so good to have you. So wonderful to have you. You are the one who blesses us all the time. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. We want to follow you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And I hope you believe that following Jesus is blessed. Amen. You know, following Jesus is not just following some law. Mm. When you follow Jesus, when you obey Him every day and have a close relationship with Him, you enjoy life. You have strength every day of your life. Hallelujah. Amen.